For the last three years, I have explained the new car and the changes that we have made to it, always with last year's car nearby. And I could jump between the two cars, pointing out the differences one to the other. But this year, here I am with the W12 all alone. To understand why I'm standing with just one car this year, you have to go back to the spring of last year when COVID started to overtake our season. After Melbourne was canceled the first race of the year, and it was clear that the whole sport was gonna be significantly affected by COVID-19, the sport met to try and map out its future in what was obviously going to be a difficult year. And we took a few very sensible decisions. We could see even then that it wasn't just 2020 that was gonna be affected and that COVID was gonna cast a very long shadow over the season to follow as well. And the sport made a series of quite sensible decisions to try to survive in this new world affected by this disease. And the decision they took that was most striking was that we would carry over parts of the car from one year to the next, so that the backbone, the underlying structure of the car, would be the same between the 2020 season and the 2021. So with this W12 in front of me here today, bits of it are achingly familiar. The survival cell where the driver sits, that's the same piece. The transmission at the back, the fuel system, the hydraulic system, many, many, many of the components on the car are simply cut and paste from last year to this. And not only are they cut and paste in a design sense, the actual physical parts, this survival cell, is the very thing that raced last year on our 2020 design. Hence, no 2020 car behind me, because those 2020 cars have actually been transformed into these 2021 cars. Now, although there are lots of bits of the 2020 car in this design, that doesn't mean in any way it is the same car. Sure, the architecture, the underlying structure is the same, but many of the things that make it a performance car have changed. And that's because the sport also decided to keep the things that tend to distinguish cars from one another in performance terms, keep those on the table. So all of the aerodynamic package, that's new. All of the engine, that's new. The cooling system beneath the skin here, that's new as well. These are the sort of things that make the main differences between the cars. And so, although we have had the good fortune of being able in this difficult year where we, our work has been so affected by COVID to be able to take big lumps of the car forward from one year to the next, we've still had the main challenge of designing a fast car all over again, completely fresh and new. Not only have all those opportunities for performance been left on the table, but they've been done so in an environment where the rules have been changing very fast as well. In the previous season in 2020, we saw that the cars were starting to get a little bit too fast for the tracks and a little bit too fast for the tires. And so it was important just to bring the performance back a little bit. So the sport met again and decided to change the aerodynamics on the car to slow them down. So on the back of the car, on the floor, the rules were changed quite a lot. It doesn't look like much. When you see the changes in geometry terms, you look at the car, it won't look so different. But actually from an aerodynamicist point of view, the changes at the back of the car here, in front of the rear wheels, in the diffuser behind, in the forward uh, part of the floor just down there, those changes are actually very, very big. And from an aerodynamicist point of view, they represent a sort of regulatory vandalism that actually knocked the performance of the car right back about a year and a half to somewhere around 2019 levels. And of course, we don't want to leave the performance at 2019 levels. The regulators didn't expect them to stay at 2019 levels. They expected us to do our job, which is to scrabble our way back forwards by working in the wind tunnel and trying to find that performance back again onto the car. And we've had a, a very exciting time in the wind tunnel doing just that, finding new ways to make sure that even with the floor chopped and hacked by regulation, we're able to put a car down on the track that has high performance. 
In the middle of the car here, the power unit, I said that was all new, and it is. Every little bit of it is new. And it's probably uh, most obvious to an external observer in that big bulge that you see there. There's been a big investment by our, by our friends at HPP, our teammates at HPP, to uh, redesign the plenum, the intake system of the engine, retune the engine around that, and squeeze a lot more horsepower out of the, out of the power unit as a consequence. But they've had to do that in a very interesting regulatory environment where they only get one shot at it. In previous years, they were allowed three goes. You have a phase one PU, a phase two, and a phase three, each bought at different parts of the season with the power unit getting stronger through the year. In this year's rules, they get one go, and they have to make sure they can put all that goodness into the power unit right from the start of the year. Another big change to the rules for 2021 is that we have new tires. The tires last year, as I mentioned earlier, they were starting to get a bit on the limit for the performance of the cars. And these new tires for 2021 have been re-engineered to give more durability and, uh, and more margin for the cars. And we saw the performance of these tires in two little glimpses last year. We were allowed to try them out in a couple of free practice sessions. And we could see from those two glimpses that they have a significant effect on the handling of the car and on the performance of the car. And it will be really crucial in just the three days of winter testing that we get at the start of this year to really understand what makes these tires work. Because the glimpses last year gave us a sense of what they want, but the fine tuning of that, really figuring out where their operating point is, is, is going to make a big difference to the competitiveness of the overall package. So standing before this W12, it's a strange feeling. Bits of me are thinking, well, it's an old friend. This looks very familiar. But actually, that's not how I feel overall. I don't feel like this is something that you could just put on like an old coat or pick up like an old friendship and just make it all happen like it did the year before. It feels very much like it should do at the start of a year. It feels like the beginning of a new relationship where you're excited, you're hopeful, but you're also a bit frightened that you might say or do the wrong thing and where you know it's important that you don't. And so this car in front of us, we hope that in the winter testing, we will do all the right things to get the best from it and to build that relationship so that over the course of the season, she will eventually prove to be as good a friend to us as her predecessor was in 2020.